you may well want to use your plan from GCAD Plus in other software such as Photoshop. Photoshop could be used to put a gradient behind uh, the image and, and generally speaking pretty things up and maybe copy in some other images. If you make a layout with its white background and export from here, use the Mac Raster tool from here, you'll have a plan with a white background which is quite handy in the, say, the Photoshop environment. You can also use, if you look in our module on 3D models, you can also use a graphic made in this way to throw into the free version of SketchUp and just pull up some uh, rectangles and circles and, and use the line command and pull up to create 3D geometry very, very easily and you get the proportions right because you are building them on a 2D plan. So to make a raster image, it's tools, make raster, and up pops this um, dialog box. I'm putting mine in uh, on my uh, network drive and there's quite a long path to it. It's going in the Learn CAD series, but I can export a raster image which shows what I'm currently displaying or I can pick a rectangle and I can pick from one corner to the other, any zone in fact within it. As you change the number here, the resolution number, you'll see the size change. So if I dropped that resolution back to 50 dots per inch, I get an image file of 1500 by 836, which is quite reasonable, would have reasonable definition, but maybe in this case I'd make quite a large image about 3,000 by 1,600 um, wide. If you push that resolution too high, uh, you, your Make Raster tool may well fail. Uh, a, a 150 dots per inch, I think, would be an absolute limit for uh, raster image. The, the file size will be large as you push that number up. If you make export a raster image from model space, you'll, of course, have a black background unless you happen to change it in the drawing configuration settings. So we just pick OK and the image file will be generated written to that particular subfolder and in this case it's called Modern JPEG Out. That's just a clue to me. It's the one I want to use when I'm in the SketchUp environment to work as a base uh, for creating a 3D model. So you might like to experiment with exporting your plan to a JPEG file or it could be a PNG file. There are a number of different file formats you can use here. Well, here's that very same graphic placed into the SketchUp environment. And I've just been building 3D objects using the geometry uh, to build them. So uh, let's um, move in or zoom in on this area through here. I could use the line tool and just uh, draw some lines representing the uh, what will become a little screen for the service area there. And then it's just a matter of using the push-pull tool and pull up whatever distance you decide, maybe 450 or 650 might be a reasonable height for screening. And we can pull this one up and type 650, so the height of those two screening panels now match and we can use all the tools inside the environment. That seems rather high. I remember setting this one at uh, at um, 1800, but it's a relatively easy matter, of course, to just use push-pull and pull those down again. So let's just do that to, sh to illustrate the flexibility of the area if we make the screen the same height as just have to be a little careful and pick it as the top of our vegetable areas, we will get a better result. So from my point of view, that looks a little neater. So you can see I can put circles down. Um, if I've got three-dimensional models of artwork or 3D trees to put in, The having the guide underneath helps a lot in positioning them. I know I've got quite a reasonable uh, model, 3D model of Daites, uh, and that might be the plant that you're putting in here. I think our specimen was uh, tagged as Myoporum parvifolium, and I know I don't have a 3D model of that. But once you build up a little library, um, there may well be in the 3D warehouse. Um, that was to be uh, the Japanese maple, Acer palmatum, in there. So can you see that 
um, building the model up on that graphic is very easy. It's not dimensionally accurate. In other words, if I measure, use the measure tool um, from the bottom of that screen up to the top here, we we don't get a sensible answer, do we? 88.4 millimetres when it clearly should be 1800. And that's in, that's in fact why I made the mistake there. Uh, I just typed um, whatever it was, 650. What I should have done is match some of the other geometry because the underlying graphic image is, while proportional, is not accurate to scale. If you wanted it deadly accurate, you'd have to bring in a DXF or DWG file from your CAD software. So hopefully that shows you that you can interact uh, with graphic images out of GCAD Plus into SketchUp and those very same graphic images could go into a tool like Photoshop for additional work. I haven't assigned any materials here or put any 3D trees in. There's quite a way to go. But building that little model there was about five minutes work. So it can be very, very efficient. If you then change your view to a face style, which is wireframe, and then move the graphic onto another layer and then turn that layer off, you can actually plot this uh, wireframe image out and hand render. So you can see I've got one vanishing point at the moment. You could get the camera and select that as a two-point perspective. We've got to change our, our view and then we have to pan differently. So now we've got a, a two-point perspective and we could plot that wireframe out with it, which and we turn off the graphic and then just hand render. So you can see there are lots of ways to approach the problem of giving your client a 3D model. And it really depends how much money they're willing to pay you to overcome their fear of interpreting 2D graphic images.